I thought quite a bit about what I would like to say um, with a, a time limit. It, it, it's very hard to narrow down a few thoughts. I I went back to the the night that that we lost Millard, that he went home, his heavenly home. We were down at the um, emergency room of uh, Phoebe Putney Hospital in Albany. And, you know, I thought it was a matter of just resuscitation. But after a big team were surrounded him, the doctor came across the hall and told me that they did everything they could, um, even beyond what they thought they could. And there was just no way that he was going to come back. So, um, daughter Faith, lives in Mexico, couldn't be with us today, was there also, and we were just in shock. Well, I had my phone with me, and as we were hugging, actually, it hadn't been more than two or three minutes since we learned the news, and my phone rang. This was in the middle of the night, and I thought, how in could this be? It was Associated Press. <clears throat> Somehow, the word got out. I don't know how fast it could have gotten out that, how, how it could have gotten out that fast. But she said, Ms. Fuller, she said, I know you just lost your husband, and this is a terrible time to call. And I thought, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, but she said, I, I need a quote. Uh, if you could give us a little quote, you know, to when we, when we post this story um, later on tonight. And I, oh, there's no way I can think of anything. So I just, Millard flashed in my head and I thought, you know, what would you say, Millard? <laughs> <laughs> I depended him, on him so much. And he said, Linda, just tell him that don't mourn my death. Put on a tool belt and grab a hammer and go build somebody a house. Well, that's what I told her. <laughs> what do you want to say, right? <laughs> well, I'm so glad to have Kim and Chris and uh, uh, Millard's brother and the other family and friends here today and my husband Paul that now is seven years been married. Um, and he does a really good job putting up with me and my demands sometimes. And I thought, well... I think God for sending you my way. Well, when we realized that our relationship was getting kind of serious, I actually brought Paul out here, and we had a little talk with Millard here. <laughs> and I never will forget, Paul stepped up here, and he said, Millard, he said, I've heard a lot about you. I never met you, but I know you were a great guy, and I have fallen in love with Linda, and I hope it's okay if I, if I, if I take care of her the rest of my life. So we didn't hear anything. But <laughs> wondering um, it's been 10 years now that that Millard just hasn't worn Jesus out and why Millard hadn't showed back up you know? <laughs> get him out of here get him out of here he's causing too much trouble up here well on a serious note um, I, I wanted to share with you some of the characteristics that I most noticed about Millard through the years <clears throat> um, and then just mention a few little thoughts about um, him as a husband, as a father, and a lawyer. First of all, what I noticed most when I got acquainted with Millard was he was always running. His, his reputation on the campus of the University of Alabama was he would run everywhere. 
and little did they know that it was because he was too poor to buy a coat and he ran the keep warm. <laughs> That's one of the ways he learned that he could get more done. He could go faster. And we said about Miller that he had two speeds, fast and stop. <laughs> he could go to sleep in a heartbeat. <laughs> he was a worker. He loved to work. He packed as much in a day as he possibly could. Most people don't know this about him um, as a student running, but he also um, had shoes that had big holes in them, and my mother uh, bought him a pair of shoes. Um, when he went on vacation with us, he would pack his clothes in one small suitcase and then also load two briefcases in the car. This was on vacation now. And his secretaries, Sharon knows as well, were well aware that he never went anywhere without his dictating. <laughs> Miller knew how to delegate. And as Sharon was saying, he copied multiple people on his letters and memos. How many people here um, had Miller ask them to do something and got a copy of somebody's <laughs> list? Yeah, he, he knew how to communicate. He was a speaker, a writer, a beggar for God. He would say, I've tried asking and not asking. I always get more when I ask. <laughs> and I actually heard someone say about Miller that he was so persuasive, so persuasive that he could talk a bulldog off of a meat wagon. <laughs> he was compassionate. His heart was bigger than life itself. A Bible scholar, people often ask Millard where he went to seminary. And he would tell them that he never studied in a seminary, but he did, did milk cows with Clarence Jordan. <laughs> he challenged himself and challenged others, knew where to draw the line between faith and foolishness. He'd just get right on the very line between faith and foolishness. He knew how to forgive. He, he could forgive someone who wronged him, pray for them, and he had a lot of practice at that through the years of forgiving. And he taught me how to forgive also, and a lot of other people. As a lawyer and a husband and father, um, Millard was just incredible in the courtroom. Not many people have ever seen him argue a case. But he kind of took pride in the fact that he even got the jury to pray with him some. <laughs> it, it's just amazing how that happened because he started talking on and on and on, and the courthouse wasn't air conditioned, and the jury got drowsing, one fell asleep. <laughs> and then he said, um, this is so serious. This was a death penalty case. He said, this is a death penalty case. You've got the hand, the li this man's life in your hands. He said, we need to pray about it. <laughs> and then he, he, looked, he looked over at the guy that was already dead like that. <laughs> and he said, thank you. <laughs> Everybody else bowed <laughs> Well, he saved that man's life. <laughs> Miller and I were married almost, almost 50 years, seven months short of 50 years. The bill that we had in West Point, Georgia, in August of 2009, was to be our 50th anniversary <coughs> celebration, as well as a celebration for God in building houses. As a father, he was a wonderful father. Um, I, I discipline a little bit of the traditional form of a hairbrush or a, a, you know something else in the back of my hand. Um, but Millard would talk to the kids. 
when they would do, do something wrong, if he was on the trip, I'd just say, wait till dad gets home. <laughs> and they would shut her in his booth because they knew he was going to sit them down and talk about it and get them to realize what they did wrong and, and, uh, and apologize for it. And they hated that word. They'd rather have mama's brush. <laughs> right here in this very spot, our family would walk over here and have a picnic. That's the reason we call it Picnic Hill. Clarence and um, his family, so many of the families that have lived here at Quinonia through the years, they would walk over here. It's such a beautiful, peaceful place. And just sit on the grass and have a picnic. So you're standing on very special ground here, holy ground, and nothing would make Miller happier to know that you're here today and to have his family, friends, co-workers, servants of Jesus, and I just want to thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thanks, Linda.